this is uh, Bernard with Insurance Advisors Direct and one of the life and annuity uh, team here uh, with Insurance Advisors Direct. And uh, what we're doing today is actually a continuation from our uh, sales summit that we had at the beginning of April. Uh, we had um, a webinar uh, last week uh, talking about long-term care um, as a recap. And then this week, we actually have a presentation that uh, you uh, can use with your clients, uh, either face-to-face uh, -face or uh, in a seminar setting or maybe a, a virtual uh, setting. Um, so what we're going to do is going to introduce our uh, good friend, uh, Chris Schiever, uh, who is a, a, a resident long-term care hybrid uh, expert. Um, and what he's going to do is go through this presentation with you. And then at the end, I'm going to show you how a hybrid uh, link benefit or asset-based uh, illustration uh, looks. So here, Chris, go away, my friend. Take it away. Thanks, Bernard. I really appreciate that. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for being with us here. I'm uh, going to run through a short presentation to, um, you know, kind of provide you an education on what some of the options are that are available to address long-term care expenses, okay? Um, and how these expenses that are here, if not addressed with long-term care, can truly impact uh, retirement for those that end up you know, if we have a couple and one goes in a nursing home and one doesn't, right? These are some of the key things that you want to think about while listening to this. Um, <clears throat> I want to let you know the presentation that I have. Um, Bernard has this over there at IAD. It is something that is available to you all, okay? And he could help you with getting that branded. Uh, all the way through for you so that you can you can uh, use this yourself all right that's what that is right there but so what are we going to do what are we going to talk about today okay it's important to start with the basics and expand your knowledge from there uh so what we're going to do is we're going to start by discussing what's meant by long-term care right and we're going to speak about the potential need for long-term care and how that should be included as part of your retirement strategy uh, we're going to touch on these options, and then we'll discuss a few other options throughout. Um, I don't always go right on what's on the screen. Sometimes you might hear me deviate or say something a couple times that I've already said, and that's generally because I think it's really important. But, you know, what's considered long-term care, right? When's it needed? What are the options? What are the steps? As an advisor, the thing that you want to know is as you're talking to your clients, make sure that they understand the reason for discussing this, the options to take care of it, but make sure they know how to come back to you, right? Set the table so that you're doing this in such a way that they could come back and discuss with you what they wrote down, okay? Make sure that they know to do that with their family. Having a little problem here, folks. I'm sorry, I don't know. Why I'm not being able to switch slides here. Um, there we go. Okay, so what's considered long-term care, right? Uh, w when you look at it, long-term care truly is, is kind of like two methods. There's informal methods where you have family, friends, and community take care of you at home. There's many different levels of this care. Uh, make sure you're open-minded to that. There's also formal methods, right? The ones that we all know, assisted living, nursing homes, qualified in-home care and adult daycare. Again, different levels of support that's needed. I'm gonna let you all know a, a statistic here, okay? And, and you might wanna truly write this down, all right? 80%. 80% of all care is done at home in the first two years, right? 80% of all care is done at home in the first two years. That's what the statistics show. So what does that mean? That A lot of that's informal methods, right? That's family. That's friends. 
that's maybe you're at home, but you go to adult daycare for a bit, right? Got to understand that. Now, to take that statistic a little bit further, I want you all to know this. The person that is taking care of or handling that care is the oldest daughter or daughter-in-law the majority of the time. Okay? This is why it's important when you're talking to your client and making them understand what their options are that they realize there's really two different ways for long-term care to be paid out as well, and we'll touch on those a bit. So... When somebody's wondering, hey, when, when will I need care? When will, when will my policy be triggered? You know, what really is that guideline? Well, what they look at is uh, activities of daily living, right? These, uh, you know, toileting, bathing, continence, transferring, dressing, eating. I had it said to me once, it's really the things you do when you wake up in the morning, okay? You wake up in the morning, and if you're not able to take care of two of those six things, uh, you're going to qualify for care with the policy that you have, okay? So make sure that you you let them know that, right? Some people are going to say, hey, look, I got my wife. She'll take care of me. I don't need that policy. I don't need to set money aside. Listen, again, I had a really, really impressive and really good uh, financial professional that I work with. And uh, he told me once that he'll just ask his clients straight up, you know, Miss Smith, if I were to ask you right now to take Mr. Smith and to pick him up and make sure that you could get him over on the toilet or that you could get him over in the shower and that you could hold him up and wash him, would you be able to do that, right? A lot of times the answer is no. Let's remember when we're adults and we need this care, we're not little babies that we're dressing, right? We're grown adults, it's not as easy as you might think, and that's where a professional might be needed, okay, or other help from family members. This is not something to not look at the importance of. So some more numbers, right? Why should you consider long-term care as part of your retirement strategy? Well, here's the bottom line. The Department of Health and Human Services states that anybody that's 65 today has a 70% chance of having a long-term care stay and or need. What that means is two out of three people will need that, okay? Today, as you go about your day, when you're sitting at the restaurant getting lunch, when you're sitting with your husband and child, even though your child and husband and yourself might not be 65, imagine that you are. Wherever you are, just look at it and say, look at two out of two out of the three of us are gonna need this. What does that mean? That means the odds are that you or your husband will end up needing this sort of care and it can drain your assets and make your retirement miserable if you don't have that taken care of, right? Um, so when you, oh, I'm sorry, folks. I just did something that now moved the screen. So 4.3 years. If you get through the, the first year, you, on average, you're going to stay 4.3 years under the care of long-term care, whether it's assisted living, nursing home, whatever it might be, right? And 4.8 years right there, what that is really discussing is cognitive issues, Alzheimer's, okay? Uh, the average life expectancy of somebody with Alzheimer's at the age of 65 is four to eight years. Some live as long as 20 years. Again, think about what the cost is, right? Maybe Bernard at the end can tell you what the cost is in Michigan on average per month, okay? Start doing the math and what you can see is somebody that has a million dollars or less, it's gonna be wiped out pretty quick. And that person left behind, that person that's not in the nursing home, that surviving spouse that doesn't need that care, they thought they were gonna be able to do a lot of stuff throughout their retirement not able to do it now. When you're unable to perform two of six uh, activities of daily living, that is when it gets triggered. I think I told you that before, okay? Or it could be because of falls or accidents, chronic illness, strokes, cognitive impairments, right? Uh, these are things that could cause the need for long-term care. So, 
Let's remember, everybody, I'm giving this perf this uh, presentation to you all as, as um, financial professionals. But when you give it, you're going to be talking to individuals, to possible clients, right? And you're going to be talking to them about, hey, what, what do you need to think about? Well, you need to think about how's this going to affect your family and your retirement? Where should I consider receiving care? What's the potentially what's the potential cost? And how do I take care of that cost, right? I often tell people, make sure that your client has their oldest daughter or son there to help them go through this and to understand it. Whoever that alpha child might be, make sure they're involved. Let them help with the process. But more importantly, if they don't want to help, make them understand the impact that this could have on their mother or father. So when we start looking at retirement and how this sort of um, how, how this could could sort of become a issue, OK. You need to know that there's informal and formal care, right? Who's going to be taking care of that informal care? Who will oversee the formal care? OK, what are we going to do? Are we going to use insurance or are we going to have an asset? If we use an asset, is it potentially money that we originally thought was going to go to retirement? Is it subject to taxation? Is it subject to market fluctuation? Right? Can you imagine if you don't do anything to leverage your dollars for long-term care and your money's in the market and then all of a sudden you go into a nursing home and it's qualified money, right? Let's just look at the worst case scenario. You have to take money out of that qualified asset. The market's down, right? You're selling into a down market. Then on top of that, any of the gains that you still might have are taxable. Okay. In other words, if your cost is $10,000 a month, it could cost you upwards of thirteen dollars or $14,000 that you're going to have to take out of your account to pay for that. Why would somebody want to do that, folks? Okay, advisors. Why would somebody want to take more money to pay for something when they can plan for this and take less money to pay for it? Oh, by the way, it protects each of you as well, right? It helps your clients money stay. It allows when they pass away for you have more money to deal with with the next generation. But more importantly, if you're somebody who is managing money or whatever, you get paid on the amount of money you manage. We don't want that money to be flying out the door at a, at a clip of $10,000 a month, right? That hits into your income. Let's look at a way that we could help leverage those dollars. Right? What does it cost? Again, there's a lot of good uh, websites and things out there that you can see, but the bottom line is it's a, really a lot of ifs, right? right? What ifs? Who's giving the care? Where's the care being given? How long is it needed? What age will the care be needed, right? You need to understand and know what are the costs for these services, right? You got to know all that stuff. Advisor, this is where you could go over this with your clients and let them understand what their problem is. The problem is not the premium, okay? The problem is the cost that they're going to have to pay upwards of five to $10,000 per month while that care is needed. The problem is if they try to save that money and a child says, we'll help take care of you, now that child has to leave work early. That child has to take a leave of absence. Now that child's not making money. That child's not putting money into their own retirement plans, right? Remember this, premium is the solution to what this problem is, okay? Premium is the solution. Okay, so there are public programs that could help cover some of this stuff, right? Um, there's self-funding that you could do as well, but remember, I already spoke about this. Are you going to dedicate a portion of your portfolio to long-term care needs and then live a desolate retirement because you got to save X amount of it for that? Have you thought about the risks of market volatility, inflation, and other stuff that could come into play there? Okay. So here's how self-funding works, folks. 
If you require long-term care, you got to dig into your savings, money markets, right? You got to go in there and take money out. Annuities, IRAs, stocks or bonds, real estate. Real estate's a good one. I hear this all the time. I got people telling me, hey, I got a great portfolio of real estate. You know, I got uh, I, I got five, five, five um, rental properties that I own. They're all filled up, man. That rent, I got those things paid off. That rent's paying my retirement income. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. Until the day that one of those people says, I don't want to live here anymore. Right? Until they quit paying you your rent. Okay? Until that happens and then one of those other rental properties has the air conditioner go out or the heat. Folks, the point is there's a lot of what ifs when you're self-funding and a lot of money that's involved. Do you, do you want to still worry about market volatility? Do you want to worry about the what ifs of real estate? Do you want to deal with any of the taxes that could be due on liquidating IRAs? Do you want to get rid of that, that safe money that you have sitting in savings and money markets, right? Remember, these are the things that are what you need to talk to your client about. Why would somebody want to pay 100% of the cost when they could pay a quarter of the cost? So what happens is a lot of people rely on informal care, right? It's usually provided by a known trusted individual, family, friends, people within the community, local charities, churches, stuff of, of, of the such, right? Um, you, you need to know when you're looking at that is how is it going to affect that person if it is your family? Do you want your family to be uh, changing your diapers, giving you a bath? Is that what you really want? All right, then if we're going to have community or church, do you want former friends and people that you maybe went and ate dinner with and did stuff? Do you want them to be taking care of those private needs for you? Do you understand, folks? There's a lot of stuff that comes into play with this that if as advisors you start discussing this with them, letting them understand what their problem is, you might be able to help some people, okay? You might be able to help some people to have a better quality sense of life, to have more control over how this stuff's taken care of. So when we get to what we all really want to know, what, what, what are the options when we get away from self-funding, right? Well, you got traditional long-term care, okay? Traditional long-term care, what's that going to do for you? It is. It's going to reimburse the cost of qualified care. It's going to cover some various needs. It does have benefits, but it also has some problems. The problems are it is health insurance. Any of you on here that are health insurance professionals, you know something that happens with health insurance. Every year, the premium goes up. I might be exaggerating, but it does go up. Right? It's use it or lose it. You're going to pay premium. If you don't ever use it, you lose it. Like you definitely need something bad to happen for traditional long-term care to pay off. And who on God's green earth wants that to happen, right? We got linked benefit products and life insurance with optional long-term care writers. This is where the market is going. It's where the market's been. Most companies have pulled out of the traditional long-term care space. It's too costly. It's too volatile. And quite frankly, people don't want it that way. The real thing is life insurance. Now you could have a product where your premium's locked in. If you end up not going to a nursing home or needing that help, there's a death benefit that pays all the premium back to your beneficiaries plus some. And you also have cash growth inside that policy so you can turn around and pay yourself back, right? So that's a that's a huge, huge benefit right there. Link benefit products. These, again, are a life insurance contract. They're going to have a return of premium on it. 
You're never going to have to worry about things increasing and you're going to have huge benefits or leverage of your dollars. Plus you can put inflation on there. Phenomenal products, many payment options and everything that you can do. Folks, again, I want you to understand the premium is not the problem. The premium is the solution. Okay. Don't look at this as, oh my God, I got to do it as cheap as possible. Oh my God, they're not going to want to pay that. Listen, I got a question for you and I want you to really seriously consider this question. If you're talking to somebody and they tell you, hey, I'm not going to pay $1,000 a month for long-term care. All right. So what you're choosing to do is pay $10,000 a month when you go into a nursing home. Which one's cheaper? Right? Which one's cheaper? If somebody doesn't want to pay a huge cost, I would argue that then they want to have long-term care type coverage. They just don't understand why yet. And it's our job to make sure that they understand how this is going to take the pressure off all their other assets and how this is going to give them protection. But the best part about it is, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, okay, you guys don't, if you don't use this, all your money is going to be paid back to your family, okay? If your situation changes in 20 years, there's going to be a bucket of cash sitting inside these plans that if you need the money, you could get it. It's not like traditional long-term care, okay? All you're doing is moving money from the left pocket to the right pocket. So traditional long-term care, how's it work? Well, one way. You have to need a long-term care stay to get any benefit. Life insurance with a long-term care rider. If you need long-term care, you have it. If you pass away, all your money plus some gets paid back. Link benefit products, right? It's there for long-term care. It's there if you pass away. If you need your money back, you can get it back, okay? So folks, when you go ahead and talk to your clients, use this presentation, use the concepts here. Understand, again, this might be annoying, but I need you to understand this. Premium is the solution, okay? It is the solution. The problem is the fact that long-term care costs so much money that it's going to destroy the retirement of the person left behind. And we don't want that to happen. Think about your mother and father, right? If dad went into a nursing home and their nest egg's 700,000 bucks that they have sitting there, dad ends up using up 400,000 of that for long-term care while he's in the facility because they self-funded. Now your mom has to attempt to live the rest of her life on nothing but one social security check, possibly a pension, maybe not a pension, and then supplementing her income with $300,000 that she has left. Is she going to be able to, on top of the fact that she's mourning and missing her best friend that was part of her life forever, is she still going to be able to go take those fun trips she wants? Is she going to be able to go see her grandkids? Is she going to be able to go out of town on Christmas to be with family? Is she going to be able to keep the home that she's living in? Folks, don't think of this problem as something that's simply the cost of the long-term care. Think of the problem in a bigger holistic view of what does it mean for the person left behind in those retirement assets. Okay. Have your client write down a written strategy that they come up with. This strategy might not be perfect. You just want to use that as a way to guide what you're going to do for them. Ask them to discuss it with you. Plan where the money is going to come from. And what are the solutions? How are we going to do this? What do they really want? Folks, I'm going to leave you with this. And then I believe Bernard's got some stuff to talk to you about. But I want to leave you with this. Premium is the solution. Thanks for listening today, and I hope that I said a couple of things that might be able to help you out the next time you're talking to a client. All right. Thank you, Chris. Here, do us a favor and stop sharing your screen. 
There you go. And here, folks, here, I'm just going to show you a couple of um, illustrations from uh, One America and uh, Nationwide, just to show you how uh, the link, an asset based plan works and then a linked uh, benefit plan work. Here, let me see if I can get this up. And then afterwards, if you have any questions for Chris or myself, um, we'll be glad to, to answer them. So here, let's take a look at um, an asset-based plan with uh, One America. Uh, this company is particular uh, a whole life uh, product, an asset-based plan. And here, I won't go through all of the minutia of it. We're going to get right to the meat and potatoes of the plan. So as we look here, these are... Uh -oh. These are the the. Can you see my screen, folks? I could see it. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So these are the plans or are the benefits that are offered. Um, so the ALB or the acceleration of benefits, we have it set up for uh, twenty five months uh, with a three percent uh, inflation. But what we also did, uh, we took it a step further and we created a continuation of benefits. So once the 25 months is over with, the continuation benefits will last, last for uh, life. And so the person put in a single premium of $100,000 uh, with a face amount of $60,000. Uh, so... Uh, Let's say if a person needs benefits and we'll go up, we'll scroll up a little bit. Person needs benefits starting in year 15, which would, would make them 80. So uh, benefits would be uh, $3,664 uh, per month that would go to the facility or uh, home health care or wherever this person is receiving their uh, long-term care needs. Um, one of the good things about this, and if I can find it, there is a guaranteed premium. Let's say if this person passes away and maybe um, we'll just say for the sake of using up all of their uh, benefits, there is a guaranteed uh, amount, which I think is 20,000, between 15 and 20,000 that will go towards, uh, go to her beneficiaries uh, as a death benefit. Um, I mean, it's it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. As we scroll back up, we look at how the, the policy grows. She puts in $100,000, uh, 3% um, inflation. Uh, each year compounded each year, death benefit is $60,000. And you see how the cash value grows. So let's just say in year 10, the person decides they don't want uh, this insurance anymore and they want to cash out. So um, they'll have uh, $36,605 uh, that they can uh, take out. Uh, which is uh, pretty cool as opposed to uh, traditional long-term care. And I'm not um, nagging on traditional long-term care because it is uh, needed. There is a need for it. And it's always of uh, what best fits the client's need. But with the life insurance aspect of it, as Chris was saying earlier, um, uh, you have a, a return of premium. It won't be the full premium, but it will be a return of premium. Um, and if you don't decide to take it, there's your death benefit. If you don't use the the uh, the monthly benefit, you'll have the sixty thousand. I mean, if you do, uh, you use it all up. Uh, you'll have a minimum of fifteen to twenty thousand available to your beneficiaries for uh, uh, as a death benefit. Um, so this is how uh, the asset base plan works. So here we'll look at one with the linked uh, benefit with uh, nationwide. Uh, also uh, use this as a single premium. 
of a hundred thousand dollars and here we'll take a look at here so a hundred thousand dollars in uh maximum uh total long-term care benefit uh that they would receive monthly uh four thousand uh two hundred forty three dollars now with the inflation let's say at age 80 and 15 years uh that benefit will have risen to six thousand six hundred eleven dollars for uh benefit they can have for for six years um now with here uh, also the minimum uh death benefit uh if all the uh benefits are used up the beneficiaries receive twenty thousand uh, dollars as a death benefit. I mean, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward uh, with the link benefit plans. Let's see if we can show you so how it works. There we go. So, yep, you put in a uh, hundred thousand. Um, the net death benefit is 101,000. And you see how the, the cash value grows. So let's say at age 74, they haven't used any of the benefits. Uh, they wanna cash out of this policy. Uh, they'll have $61,055 available uh, to them. Um, and you can see uh, in the blue under total monthly benefit uh, with that inflation uh, rider that's added to it, um, say year 15, age 79, and they'll have uh, $6,418 that they can use towards long-term care benefits for the next six years. So uh, pretty straightforward with the uh, link benefit plans. Um, no, I like them. Um, and Chris said it is uh, a growing uh, need for, and people are looking more at the link benefits. Um, now, I did find something interesting uh, yesterday. Uh, one of our clients, well, one of our agents in California, uh, she uh, recently wrote, actually this week, she wrote, or Saturday, she wrote or submitted a um, long-term care plan, uh, asset-based plan with One America with a, a single premium of $95,000. So, I mean, she has a couple other plans in the works uh, as well, but it's interesting. Uh, she has a client that lives in the state of Washington. In the state of Washington, they have uh, that long-term care mandate where everyone is mandated to uh, purchase some type of long-term care uh, through their employer. Um, she asked the question, well, does link benefits uh, would link benefits work uh, for a person instead of traditional long-term care? So when I first didn't know the answer, but looked it up, um, in Washington State will allow you to have link benefits, but with certain carriers, carriers that she looking for is a part of uh, those um, carriers. Now, as long as the plan is qualified, it meets the state of Washington's uh, requirements, you can opt out of that plan, uh, that employer-sponsored plan, to get the link benefits plan. So, um, you know, we have that legislation here in Michigan, don't know the full requirements uh, of it or the ins and outs of it yet until it's actually passed. But uh, if folks um, aren't or do not want to be a part of that mandated plan, they can opt out and use a long-term care plan, which I thought were, or a uh, long-term care link benefits plan, which I thought was quite interesting. So folks, uh, I mean, that's it in a nutshell. Uh, are there any questions for Chris and myself? All right, so... Seeing or hearing no questions, uh, next steps, uh, I'll be reaching out to everyone today to discuss uh, this webinar, uh, see if there's any contracting opportunities or, or any type of opportunities we can do to assist you. Um, I'll also throw out there with this presentation, uh, you can get a copy of this presentation as well. Uh, just maybe uh, get appointed with a couple of cares, but we'll, we'll see about that. Um, and as a as a treat, 
if you all can uh, want to do a virtual seminar, um, we'll be glad to host it on our platform. And I will uh, be the presenter for uh, your uh, webinar or your virtual seminar. Uh, we'll do two of them for you until you get uh, adjusted to uh, the, the presentation and be able to do it on your own. But for the first two, yeah, be glad to uh, do the presentations for you. Let's see what we have another question here. Uh, Andrea, you are quite welcome. So folks, um, if that's it, like I said, I'll be calling each and every one of you. Um, please take me up on my offer about doing the uh, two presentations for you. Um, let's see if you can get maybe a minimum of five folks on the presentations and go from there. We'll see how easy it is for you to uh, write a couple of long-term care uh, policies on your clients. Uh, so if that's it, uh, Chris, you have anything else, my friend? I don't have anything, Bernard. If anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out to Bernard and uh, he'll make sure your question gets to me and we'll get you an answer, okay? Uh, thanks for being here and listening to me and letting me uh, be part of your guys' uh, uh, meeting this morning. All right, folks, you guys have a good rest of your day, good rest of your week. And I say, uh, be on the lookout for my phone call. All right, take care now. Bye.